Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I wanna to talk about how I sell framed artworks. Um, I had someone ask me a question about how I sell the, uh, the paper paintings that I do, um, how I personally sell them and sell them framed and, and shipped out. So I basically sell all my paper paintings framed already. Like I don't just send the paper, like the paintings on paper just out. I could, it would be super cheap for me to sell them that way. I could just put them in a shipping tube and ship them out. Um, it's a lot cheaper on shipping. It's a lot less hassle for me to have to, you know, do that. Or I could put it in like a, a flat cardboard thing and, and ship it in like a bubble wrap envelope. That would be a lot easier for me. And I could do that. However, I found that a lot of people don't like to put in any more work than they have to um, when buying art or when setting it up. A lot of people just like to get the art and then hang it. That's it. That's all they like to do. Everybody's different, but for the most part, I found that a lot of people just want to put it up right away. They don't want to have to go through extra hassle to do that. So how I sell it is basically I sell the paper painting in a frame, a glass frame, or you could use a frame with an acrylic um, like face instead of glass. I usually use glass. It just depends on the size of the painting and what frame I'm using. Um, but generally it's glass and... Um, I will use a, I will use the, I'll put the painting in there and then I'll put a mat over it. Um, and then it will be in the frame. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of paintings that I have and have not done that with, uh, and a piece of artwork that my wife actually did because my wife does, uh, our artwork from time to time. She does paper artwork. So she, you know, buys decorative paper and she cuts it and she uses a Cricut and all of that and, and makes her own designs. So she also you know, does some artwork in her spare time. So I'm going to show you a couple of different examples um, and just, just explain. It's very simple. Um, but the reason I do it is because it has a nice presentation. Um, so you can do it framed without a mat. And simply the mat is that little cover that goes inside uh, the frame that, you know, shrinks down the painting. It kind of cuts off the edges a little bit, but it gives it a nice clean presentation because it centers whatever's in the painting. Um, so I like to use mats. You don't have to though. If your painting goes edge to edge, um, you don't have to use a mat. And I'll show you an example of why I do it. And again, I'll show you some different examples, but it's up to you. Um, I tend to use them just for a couple of reasons. One, the paintings that I tend to do, I have to tape my paintings down. So there's generally a white edge around those paintings. So I, I use the the mat to kind of cover that. I mean, let's be honest, like I could just put it in there, but it would look kind of tacky to have the little white edge um, uneven around the edge of the painting. I just think that looks tacky. So having that um, mat in there just cleans it up because it's a straight square within that picture. Also, the mat, I feel like, just gives it a more professional look because without the mat, it, it looks good in the frame, but the mat also just kind of adds, like, another dimension to it, almost like you would see in a gallery or something where it's, like, it's matted so that it, it looks like it's uh, just part of the presentation. So it just gives it a cleaner look um, overall, a little more... To me, it looks like a more professional uh, piece with the mat in there. So that's why I do it. Uh, again, totally your choice. So let me show you some, some examples. Now, if you've watched... Sorry, I'm going off screen. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll see that a lot, I do a lot of these paintings on paper. And you can see that the edges not only are white, but they're, they're, they're kind of messy because sometimes the paint gets under the tape. And that's just part of the creative process. Even when I sell my paintings on my website, I will specifically say the edges are not, you know, clean. They're not straight. But Listen, this is art. Art gets messy, especially paintings. And I think people, a lot of people understand that and expect some kind of mess to it. Now they want it to be professional. And that's why, you know, on a regular painting, I would paint the edges because I want it to look clean. But it's also a painting. It's going to be kind of messy because it's, it's paint. So anyway, Coming back, a lot of my paintings I tape down, so there will always be these little weird edges, so I cover them with the mat. Again, if you paint all the way to the edges and you have no gaps around it, then not using a mat is perfectly fine, and I'm going to show you an example. So here is a painting that is in a frame uh, that you can see goes edge to edge. There is no uh, mat in this frame, okay? So... It basically is just the painting itself in the frame 
and that's it. There's no, there's no mat in here because this painting goes edge to edge. So I didn't tape this painting down. I made it all the, on the entire paper. So because of that, I didn't have to put a mat over it. And it looks good. This painting looks just fine like that. So you can definitely do that. However, if you have uh, messy edges or if you tape your paintings down, I recommend using the, the mat to kind of cover that. Now I'm gonna show you another painting right here that again, it doesn't have a mat, but it needs one because of this very reason. So here is a painting that I did in a frame and I'm gonna kind of bring it in close and you can see the edges are not, um, the painting does not go edge to edge because it was taped down. So you can see just looking at the painting that there is these little gaps and they're not even, and sometimes the paint kind of goes to those edges. So again, this painting is not, it doesn't look professional to me um, because there's the little gaps and the gaps are not even all the way around. If it was a perfectly even gap all the way around, maybe it would look professional. However, because it doesn't have that even gap, it's just got some white here and less white here. And then on the other side, there's not that much white at all. It doesn't look professional. It doesn't look clean. Doesn't look good, at least not to me. Also, the having the mat in there kind of gives it like a 3D look. It just gives it like another dimension because it, it actually raises uh, the glass a little bit. So it pulls it off the painting. So it also kind of gives it that, like a little bit of breathing room uh, for that piece. Now I'm going to show you the final uh example and this is again one that my wife did so this is a small uh piece of artwork that my wife did and you can see that she used a small mat so the mat is basically if you don't know what that is uh it's just a cardboard or cardstock uh frame that goes within your frame over your piece to basically center it and it, it does cut off the edges but it creates a almost like a frame within a frame to really give your, you know, again, to clean up the piece. So she has the mat over her piece and it gives it a nice clean presentation. So again, this is how I tend to sell my paintings. If the painting goes edge to edge, it could go either way. I may not put a mat around it, but generally I do just because again, it makes it look clean. So that's my personal preference. And that's how I tend to sell my paper works. Um, but I know a lot of artists that don't do that. They don't frame the works or they don't put mats in the frames. They just sell the paper works and they sell them cheap, you know, a hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollars, whatever they're worth. They sell them like that. Um, and they just either put them in a shipping tubes or they'll put it between, you know, they'll sandwich it between like cardboard and then ship it out like in a, a flat envelope or something like that. It's really your call. And I know a lot of artists that do different things. Again, it's cheaper to do shipping uh, in a tube or, you know, in cardboard. But for me, the problem with that is that it's easily damaged, number one. So if you ship it in a, you know, in a tube and it's rolled, it has a chance to just stay rolled or to damage the paint. Second, if you ship it just in cardboard, you know, I've seen, I've seen, uh, you know, stuff in the mail get bent, right? Even though it's in protective cardboard, you know, they'll bend it to, to put it into a, like a mailbox or behind something. So it can get bent. Now, obviously that's not always the case, but it is possible. Now, yes, unfortunately, if you sell a painting and put it in glass, um, you know, you do run the risk of that glass breaking, but I do have a video on that on how to ship, you know, paintings with glass. So essentially you would just put tape over the glass in an X so that if it breaks, you know, they can just replace that glass. Um, and then you just wrap the whole thing in a lot of bubble wrap and then ship it off. Maybe put some cardboard on the sides to protect it. And I have not had an issue. That's just my personal experience. Again, you can get frames that have an acrylic sheet instead of glass, and those are a lot less likely to break. Although I don't think that they look as clean. Totally your call again, based on your budget or your preference. Now, lastly, I want to talk about the, the mats themselves. So those mats that you get for the painting, uh, you can get them, you can get them online, you can get them from a framing shop, or you can get them from a craft store. So I tend to get a lot of my everyday kind of supplies from Michael's, which is a craft store, you know, craft slash hobby store out here. Um, I don't know where else it is. I'm in Arizona, but 
you know, you can get it from uh, Michael's, but you can get them from Amazon, whatever. Um, I tend to go with white almost exclusively. They have different colors, like they have off-white or they'll have yellow or black or gray or whatever. There's different colored mats for whatever you want. You know, it you, you definitely could choose the color based on the color scheme of the painting itself. Generally, what I do is I will do a black frame with a white mat over that painting. So the the coffee one I showed you was a brown frame, but that's only because I had the frame. But generally, I will just do a black, a simple black frame with a white mat over that painting, and that's it. I don't know. I don't. I don't tend to buy super ornate frames. I don't tend to buy super fancy mats or different colors. Just a black frame with a white mat over whatever the painting is. I found that that complement of the black frame with the white mat over whatever the painting is, it doesn't really matter what that painting is inside. It's just such a clean and, and minimalist uh, presentation that it goes with almost anything. And they can hang that up pretty much anywhere in their house. And here's the thing. If I buy the mat and the frame and I ship it to them and they don't like the frame, they can swap out the frame all they want because they can spend as much money as they want on a nice frame. But if I've given them the mat and I've given them the frame, if they don't want to buy a new frame, it's ready to hang. And if they do want to buy a new frame, I've already provided a mat so they can just put, you know, keep the mat in the painting and then just transfer it to a new frame and hang it up whenever they're ready. So again, that's this is all just my preference and, and my personal approach to selling and shipping framed artworks kind of take this take with take out of this what you will you know it again that's just my personal approach and what i do because i enjoy just having a finished product to the customer so that they literally have to do as little as possible and the advantage to framed paintings is that they can just you know hang it right away they just put the screw in and then put it on the little little you know triangle hooks or whatever it comes with right it just it literally takes about five minutes to hang that painting and they're off to the races so again that's why i do it those that's my process the last thing i'll say about the mats they do come in different widths so uh you could get one inch ones two inch ones one and a half totally your call um Generally, I would suggest, it, it kind of depends on the size of the painting. So if it's a large glass painting, you know, maybe go two inch. If it's a smaller, like 18 by 24 or something smaller, just do one inch. Whatever's available to you at your craft store, frame shop, or online, totally your call. Maybe just start with one inch and then kind of go from there. Um, you know, if that seems good, just always do one inch ones. Uh, if that doesn't seem like enough, then kind of, you know, crank that up to a higher width. Totally your call. I would I would probably say start with one inch if that's available to you and kind of see, you know, if you like that or if it's too much, if it cuts too much of, a, uh, of your piece, then, you know, go to something else. But that's it. That's it. Hopefully this advice helps you with, you know, if you were thinking about, you know, selling some frame paintings um, and, you know, how you go about that, you know, what kind of frame do you get? What kind of mat do you get? What's the process behind that? Why would you even bother? Again, this is all just my opinion and why I do it. So hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments or like the video, share, do whatever you got to do. Um, and hopefully you'll subscribe so that you can get more painting related videos in the future. But that's it. God bless. Take care. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, guys.